After the failure of the revolutions, it was not just the radicals. No one in the West had any idea of how to change the world. At home, the politicians had given so much of their power away to finance and the ever-growing managerial bureaucracies that they, in effect, had become managers themselves. While abroad, all their adventures had failed. And their simplistic vision of the world had been exposed as dangerous and destructive. But in Russia, there was a group of men who had seen how this very lack of belief in politics and dark uncertainty about the future could work to their advantage. What they had done was turn politics into a strange theatre where nobody knew what was true or what was fake any longer. They were called political technologists and they were the key figures behind President Putin. They had kept him in power, unchallenged, for 15 years. Some of them had been dissidents back in the 1970s and had been powerfully influenced by the science fiction writings of the Strugatsky brothers. 20 years later, when Russia fell apart after the end of communism, they rose up and took control of the media. And they used it to manipulate the electorate on a vast scale. For them, reality was just something that could be manipulated and shaped into anything you wanted it to be. But then a technologist emerged who went much further and his ideas would become central to Putin's grip on power. He was called Vladislav Surkov. Surkov came originally from the theatre world and those who have studied his career say that what he did was take avant-garde ideas from the theatre and bring them into the heart of politics. Surkov's aim was not just to manipulate people but to go deeper and play with and undermine their very perception of the world, so they are never sure what is really happening. Surkov turned Russian politics into a bewildering, constantly changing piece of theatre. He used Kremlin money to sponsor all kinds of groups, from mass anti-fascist youth organisations to the very opposite, neo-Nazi skinheads and liberal human rights groups who then attacked the government. Surkov even backed whole political parties that were opposed to President Putin. But the key thing was that Surkov then let it be known that this was what he was doing, which meant that no one was sure what was real or what was fake in modern Russia. As one journalist put it, it's a strategy of power that keeps any opposition constantly confused a ceaseless shape-shifting that is unstoppable because it is indefinable. Meanwhile, real power was elsewhere, hidden away behind the stage, exercised without anyone seeing it. And then the same thing seemed to start happening in the West. By now, it was becoming ever more clear that the system had deep flaws. Every month, there were new revelations of most of the bank's involvement in global corruption, of massive tax avoidance by all the major corporations, of the secret surveillance of everyone's emails by the National Security Agency. Yet no one was prosecuted, except for a few people at the lowest levels. And behind it all, the massive inequality kept on growing yet the structure of power remained the same. Nothing ever changed, because nothing could be allowed to destabilise the system. But then, the shape-shifting began. Thank you very much. So nice. So amazing. So amazing. What? That's OK. We, I love you more, OK? The campaign that Donald Trump ran was unlike anything before in politics. Nothing was fixed. 
What he said, who he attacked, and how he attacked them was constantly changing and shifting. Trump attacked his Republican rivals as being all part of a broken and corrupt system, a politics where everyone could be bought, using words that could have come from the Occupy movement. You've also donated to several de Democratic candidates, Hillary Clinton included, Nancy Pelosi. You explained away those donations, saying you did that to get business-related favors. And you said recently, quote, when you give, they do whatever the hell you want them to do. You better believe it. So what specifically did they do? If I ask them, if I need them, you know, most of the people on this stage I've given to, just so you understand, a lot of money. I will tell you that our system is broken. I give to many people. Before this, before two months ago, I was a businessman. I give to everybody. When they call, I give. And you know what? When I need something from them, two years later, three years later, I call them. They are there for me. So what and that's get? a broken system. So what but at the same time, Trump used the language of the extreme racist right in America, connecting with people's darkest fears, pushing them, and bringing those fears out into the open. Many of the facts that Trump asserted were also completely untrue. But Trump didn't care. He and his audience knew that much of what he said bore little relationship to reality. This meant that Trump defeated journalism, because the journalists' central belief was that their job was to expose lies and assert the truth. With Trump, this became irrelevant. Not surprisingly, Vladimir Putin admired this. The liberals were outraged by Trump, but they expressed their anger in cyberspace, so it had no effect because the algorithms made sure that they only spoke to people who already agreed with them. Instead, ironically, their waves of angry messages and tweets benefited the large corporations who ran the social media platforms. One online analyst put it simply, angry people click more. It meant that the radical fury that came like waves across the internet no longer had the power to change the world. Instead, it was becoming a fuel that was feeding the new systems of power and making them ever more powerful. But none of the Liberals could possibly imagine that Donald Trump could ever win the nomination. It was just a giant pantomime. And then, of course, there's Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. <laughs> Donald Trump often appears on Fox, which is ironic because a fox often appears on Donald Trump's head. Donald Trump owns the Miss USA pageant, which is great for Republicans because it will streamline their search for a vice president. <laughs> Donald Trump
Donald Trump said recently he has a great relationship with the blacks, though unless the blacks are a family of white people, I bet he's mistaken. <laughs> But underneath the liberal disdain, both Donald Trump in America and Vladislav Surkov in Russia had realized the same thing, that the version of reality that politics presented was no longer believable, that the stories politicians told their people about the world had stopped making sense. And in the face of that, you could play with reality, constantly shifting and changing, and in the process, further undermine and weaken the old forms of power. 